And now Chris Hansen joins us with another hidden camera investigation. Thanks, Ann. It's our very latest to catch a predator. Tonight, we head south to Kentucky, where things quickly went south for the parade of men who showed up at our undercover house thinking they'd meet a young girl home alone. We've conducted one dozen investigations now, but this time we were bowled over by what we'd seen in the quiet town of Bowling Green. Do you ever watch Dateline? I've watched it once. Well, Todd, there's something I gotta tell you. I'm on it. Right We're at it again. Get on your face. Get on your face right now. Hands out. Catching potential online sex predators in Not the right act there. of attempting to meet young Just, girls. I've had that fast in the back of my head. About being with a young girl. A, a young girl, yes. We're in a new state in a new part of the country, southwestern Kentucky. What's not oh, new is the men's reaction to meeting who they think is a young girl. I haven't had a kiss yet. Gosh, you're pretty. Go give you a hug. Well, I'd like to hold you. And then what? And kiss you. That's why I'm... Well, I see you come over here. We're set up in this 6,000 square foot home in Bowling Green, Kentucky. We've outfitted the house with 12 hidden cameras, seven outside, capturing a potential predator as he drives into the development up our street and into our driveway. Then five cameras inside pick up his every move as he walks in the door. Oh, yeah, my nice pleasure. Thank you. In the basement are our paid consultants, members of the online watchdog group Perverted Justice. Its volunteers set up profiles of 12 or 13 year olds, go into chat rooms and wait to be contacted. If a man starts chatting, expresses a desire for sex and is willing to meet, the decoy then invites the man over. Are you going to call me when you get close or to surprise me or what? For this operation, Perverted Justice has teamed up with the Kentucky Attorney General's Office, the Kentucky Bureau of Investigation, as well as local law enforcement. Most of these guys are going to be coming off 65 one direction or another, so. Kentucky Attorney General Greg Stumbo has worked with Perverted Justice during two prior sting operations without Dateline being present, like this one in northern Kentucky last spring. Thanks for helping us. Were you anxious at all? about having perverted justice, a civilian group, do the decoy work in these cases. Just the name, uh, perverted justice, sort of raises some red flags. So Stumbo says his office did a thorough background check on perverted justice. All we saw were, were positive things. We didn't see anything negative. Uh, law enforcement is not equipped to conduct these types of operations at this point. And so to us, it was just a natural fit. During the first attorney general sting in Louisville about a year ago, seven men were arrested. All were convicted of a felony. During the second sting, again with Dateline not present last April, uh, you know, 11 men arrived at this house in northern and Kentucky, second, and all 11 were arrested. One man has pleaded not guilty and is awaiting trial. The other ten have pleaded guilty. Stumbo says one of those men stands out the most. Okay, what's your name, sir? Jim Roush. R A U Z H. Okay, all right. A teacher. What do you do, Jim? Uh, I work for the uh, University of Cincinnati. He was a well-respected citizen in his community, uh, a member of a church, had uh, a lot of uh, people in the community who supported yep. him who couldn't believe that he would engage in this type of conduct. He's 59-year-old James Rausch, a retired elementary school music teacher and a criminal justice professor for a university. He's interrogated by agents from the Kentucky Bureau of Investigation. Do you, do you know how old Chyla Ann was? She told me she was 13, but I don't, I don't do that. 13-year-olds, okay? I'm... That's, that's gross. Not, not your thing? No. Okay. That's what he starts off saying but later but seems to, to change his story. I, I came here to be for her, possibly sexually too. Yeah. And I, but I don't know if I could ever have done that. He also admits he invited the decoy to see I'm, photos I'm of serious. his genitals yeah. from his webcam. More of an education for her? I think so, I think so. Because this, 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 is, this is what a guy looks like. Yeah. He ends up pleading guilty and is sentenced to 46 months in prison, followed by lifetime supervision. Hey! So what will happen this time when Dateline is present? It seems some potential predators are getting the message. KBI Commissioner David James says chat rooms are filled with men afraid to show up. 
uh, once they found out that the, the girl was in Kentucky, that we're not going to come to Kentucky because they, that's where they arrest people for doing this. Golly. But as always, that doesn't stop everyone. Stay tuned for the laughter. <laughs> well, you think this is funny? No, I'm it's just... a big joke. The tears. You ever watch a program called Dateline NBC? Come on. And the attempted getaway. Okay, out of the vehicle. Hey, come on in. Walking into our undercover house is 39-year-old John Elliott, a factory worker for a window company. He's driven two and a half hours to meet a girl who told him she was 12 and home alone. It's after 1 o'clock in the morning. I was just watching some TV. Come sit down. Uh -huh. We've hired this 19-year-old actress, Casey, to be our decoy. Elliot seems to think she's the 12-year-old virgin he's been chatting with online for the past month. Using a screen name so disturbing we can't broadcast it, he tells the decoy about his fantasy of being with a young girl. You were asking me about what I was daydreaming about. Well, that's it. You nude and me licking you. He continues to chat with the decoy about his fixation with giving her oral sex and adds that as he's talking to her, he's nude and thinking bad thoughts. I just never thought I would openly tell a young girl that. Is okay with me. But as soon as I saw your pic, I was like, man, I give anything I could to have one night with her. At one point, he tells her his hobby is taking pictures of himself masturbating and then sends the decoy some of those shots. And he doesn't stop there. Later, he sends her child pornography, a photo of a girl engaging in a sex act. That girl is young. How young? I think 14. Wow. At one point, he seems to fear she might be a policewoman. But as you can see, that doesn't stop him from showing up. How did you find the lock out of so bad? Um, yeah, it's the first door on the left. I let him go to the bathroom, and when he came out, he seemed a little more relaxed. He was a little more comfortable that, you know, okay, she let me go to the bathroom. We're going to be here a while. Gosh, you're pretty. Thank you. So what are your plans, or what are you thinking? Kissing you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was, you know, what, how we talked on the Internet. As the decoy oh, presses right. him, like, he like, stops like, smiling like. and seems to get suspicious. Yeah, she asks him about I that photo he know. sent her of the girl receiving oral what sex. About, like, oh, that picture you sent me yeah. with the 14-year-old girl? Was she really 14? I don't know. I just found it off of a guy off the internet when we were talking. Is that like what you wanted to do? Well, that's what I want to do, but I can't. I just, there's something in me that just, I just, it's not right, you know, and it's really bothering me. You seem pretty confident on the internet in terms of what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. What was your plan tonight? Actually, I wasn't really going to be doing anything because I was more to getting too scared and nervous about it. Now, why were you getting so scared and nervous? Well, I just knew it wasn't right. But that's not how you made it sound on, online. I don't know. And what about the photos he sent of himself masturbating? Why'd you do it? Well, just everything in my life is just, it's all screwed up. I got a bad job. My marriage is not good. Did you bring any condoms? No, I wasn't going to do anything like that. Yeah, what were you going to do? It was just oral. Just oral? Well, I didn't think it was that bad on oral. She told you she was 12 years old? Yeah. And you came over here planning to have oral sex with a 12-year-old girl? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to deny it. I mean, it's... Yeah. I did. When I ask him about his obscene screen name, that he starts to laugh. <laughs> Do you think this is funny? No. It's a just... big joke. No, Come no. Come over here to have sex with a 12-year-old girl, and this is a big, big old joke to you. No, no. What I'm getting at is uh, this is the very first time this has ever happened. I've never met. It's the first time you got caught, maybe. No. Right. So what made you Not decide me. all of a sudden to do it now? I mean, you've been chatting with this girl for a month. It just, I've had that fantasy in the back of my head. Fantasy? About being with a young girl? A, a young girl, yes. Well, what do you think should happen to you? Sent to an island. <laughs> Sent to an island. <laughs> exile? You think it, it, exile an island. <laughs> you still think this is all no, funny? No, I don't know why you're asking so you're, me you're, stuff like this. I mean... Well, why do you think I'm curious about all this? I can tell you're a therapist, I know. 
I mean, not just. You think I'm a therapist? Yeah, by the way, you're. Do so you close. think that you came over here to meet this girl and magically a therapist sat down to help you through your problem? I don't know. I you don't, don't know. know. Uh -uh. Well, do you, uh, you ever watch television? No, sir. All right, well, there's something I got to tell you. I'm Chris Hansen, mm -hmm. and I work for a show called Dateline NBC. Okay. And we're doing a story on adults who try to meet young teenagers online for sex. Okay. It's called To Catch a Predator. So if there's anything else that you'd like to tell us about your situation, we'd like to hear it. Now, I love my wife, and I know it doesn't look like it. I need to see a psychiatrist because the way everything's going with my life. All right. Well, why don't you go ahead and I hope you get that help. As he gets up to leave and makes the long walk to the door, officers are in position ready to arrest him. Sheriff's office. Hands up. Hands up. Hands out. Hands out. <laughs> he's taken away in an unmarked car and brought to a police station where he's booked, photographed. Thank you, sir. And brought in for questioning. Had an interesting night, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. To really. say the least. <laughs> He's read his rights, and Kentucky Bureau of Investigation agent Catherine Reed starts to question him. What brought you here tonight, John? Just fantasy. What kind of fantasies? I don't want to be with a young girl. I'm not saying it's right or anything like that. I don't mean to make it sound that way. So you knew it was wrong when mm -hmm. you came here? Agent Reed gets the man's consent to search his car and retrieve his computer from his home. He's then taken to jail. I've never been in jail or anything like that. And later brought before a judge. You were charged with unlawful transaction with a minor less than 16 years of age, first degree, which is a class B felony. Do you understand that charge? Yes, sir. The judge sets his bail. Your bond will stay at 50,000 cash. Hey, I'm glad you could come. Up next, a man shows up on his birthday, hoping for more than a kiss. Well, then what did you want to do? Well, I want to kiss first. And later, he starts crying. Cool. <laughs> Put your hands on your back. And crying. <laughs> and crying. <laughs> Mike ain't going to jail tonight. She, you will go to jail tonight. <laughs> Wait until you hear the plans he made for his date with a young teen. Back up against the wall there. I just saw a truck make a quick turn into here. This could be our boy coming right there. It's day three of our undercover investigation here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Population 50,000. Our first guest arrives at noon, right on time. 27-year-old Jeremy Todd West pulls in the driveway, and our decoy invites him in. Hey. How's it going? Good, how are you? Calling himself Bandit 8077, he starts chatting online with a decoy posing as a 13-year-old girl. After only about 20 minutes, he says he'd like to meet. Two days later, he asks her this. Are you wanting sex when we meet? Um, I don't know. I don't even know you. If we do, would you want to do it there or go somewhere and do it? The chat goes on for almost a month. It looks like a blossoming romance. Two weeks into their chat, he tells her, I would most likely want you to be my future wife. She tells him she wants to finish high school first. A jarring reminder that this is a chat between a 27-year-old man and a girl who says she's in eighth grade. Two days before he's supposed to meet the girl, he starts to get worried. But one thing that keeps running through my mind is if I get caught, I seen this Dateline thing where they are busting guys with cops trying to have sex with young kids. Oh, you think that's me? No, but it just scares me though. Apparently, it doesn't scare him enough. Bandit 8077, a public works employee from Tennessee, makes himself at home. Nah, he scares the noise. <laughs> so how's it going? So far, so good. That's good. Oh. Stacy. Well, I'll go give you a hug. Well, let's talk Why don't you first. Sit, sit down. down before you give any hugs here, and we're going to have a little chat. Uh, What's going on? Not much. Just 
Dog, come hang out, be friends. So there's no friends who are your age on the internet? Yeah. Yeah? So why can't you talk to them? No, I, I, I know what you're doing. Don't go there, please. I know what you're doing. You talk about taking her out to buy sexy bras and panties and thongs. Okay. I had a feeling this was it. You had a feeling what was it? This was a setup. We would be kissing in my hands okay. and caress your sexy body. I, I made a mistake. I made a royal mistake. I wouldn't go to sleep with her. I promise I wouldn't. I talked about it, but I wouldn't go to it. Remember, he's been talking online about having sex with a 13-year-old for almost a month. I was wrong. Then why did you do it, Don? Explain it. I was just weak moment. I had feelings I was wrong. Do you ever watch Dateline? I've watched it once. Did you ever think you'd actually be on to catch a predator? Well, Todd, there's something I gotta tell you. I'm on it. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Dude, don't. You can walk right out the door you came in. Leave, leave me. Leave him. And just like he's leave. seen on TV, law enforcement is outside waiting to arrest him. Sheriff's office, come on down. Come on down. Straight down the hands up. Get on your face. Get on your face right now. Hands out. From behind your back. Do not move. Help. Please. He's taken to the local police station, and when questioned by an agent from the Kentucky Bureau of Investigation, he sticks to his story. Now, wasn't going to do anything more than just be friends. That was it. He tells the officer he's worried about being on Dateline. You're probably going to appear on their show at some time, and and part of the reason is they use that as a deterrent for other people to not get themselves in this situation. Why well, I should have just stayed away. He's coming back, Casey. He's trying to make sure, sure he can see you. In a few minutes, our next potential predator will probably be thinking he, too, should have stayed away. Okay, his name is Lauren, L-O-R. Hey. You're Kayla. You should have condoms, pizza, bracelet, and a can. Hey, I'm glad you could hey, come. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Turns out today is his birthday. He's 37-year-old Lorne Armstrong, a construction worker. He's been chatting with a girl posing as a 13-year-old for more than a month. It's one of the longest chat logs we've ever seen. 407 pages. Using the screen name Lorne A20014, he tells her how to masturbate and then asks her if she wants to see him naked. She agrees and he turns on his webcam. He wants her to look at his penis. Would you like to see it up close so you can get a better look at it? Huh? Oh my gosh. I guess, if you want to show me. After chatting with the decoy, posing as a 13-year-old for just six days, he expresses his deep love for her. I wish I could marry you right now, because I would do it. That's how special you are to me, and that's how much I love you. But he clearly knows what he's doing is wrong, telling her to delete all evidence of their chat log. Okay, delete your archives, and remember, Mrs. Kayla Marie Armstrong, I love you more than anything. He was so excited to be here, and he came walking in very proud, very excited. It's a massage oh chair. God, it vibrates when you press the buttons. Look, oh my God. <laughs> so, I thought you had blonde hair. Do you like it? I dyed it for I think, myself. I think it's pretty. Thank you. It's very pretty. Well, weren't you going to bring me something? Well, yes, I was, and I did. Did you bring condoms? Yes, I did. Where are they? Out in the truck. Well, what good are they going to do in the truck if we're in here? Well, yell at me, why don't you? <laughs> I haven't had a kiss yet. Oh, okay. Well, then what did you want to do? Well, I want to kiss first. And then what? Can I have a kiss first? Well, let's talk first. <laughs> okay. <got> here. <laughs> are you nervous? A little bit. A little bit? Not as bad as what you thought you would be? <laughs> I like seeing you in person. Yeah, I like seeing you too. Good. Pretty comfortable there. Hi, sir. How are you? All right, how are you doing? What's happening? Not too much. Not too much. So what are you up to tonight? Not a whole lot. Well, I'll tell you, for the last several days, you've been up to a lot. You're a pretty prolific chatter there. You want to explain yourself? Not really. I never really was going to do anything. You weren't really going to do anything? No. So you brought condoms. What else did you bring? I brought her a bracelet. And she is how old? She's supposed to be 13. And how old are you? 37. Now, 
Besides all this chat here, and we'll go through that in a minute, you also sent a whole bunch of pictures. No, why would you think that's no. appropriate? It's not. It's not. You tell her to delete her archives. I don't want her to get in trouble by her parents. You talk about getting married to her. Getting married? She's 13. So I meant when she was 18. Well, you were going to marry her when she turned 18. What do you think ought to happen to you? I think I should go to counseling to get off the internet. I gotta do something that I can't do that. Oh my god. Well, there's something I gotta tell you. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on Charles. Now you're free to walk out of this house right now. But if there's anything else you want to say, now would be the time to say it. He has nothing further to say and tries to make a quick exit, apparently not knowing what's in store for him outside. Sheriff's office, down! Get down! On the ground, on the ground! Put your hands on your back! He's taken to the local police station where his car is searched. On well, Mr. Armstrong's truck, we found some condoms, a variety pack, plus some jewelry. And later, he's interviewed by law enforcement. I believe you transmitted quite a few photographs. <laughs> I'd like an attorney. All right, sir. We're coming. Up next, don't let his disability fool you. He has cerebral palsy. This is a man with a deviant plan. Did you bring the razors? Yeah. I thought she was wanting to be shaved. That's him coming at you. Yep, I see him. He would have a cane, he has cerebral palsy. No, you come in. He drove up as close as he could to the door so he didn't have to walk as far because he has the cane. I told him to come on inside and he finally agreed. Meet Dustin McFetridge. He's 26 years old, divorced, suffers from cerebral palsy and collects social security benefits. He's driven five hours to have sex with a girl posing as a 13 year old. As you'll find out, this isn't his first time chatting inappropriately with a minor. Our decoy Casey starts to feel sorry for him as she watches him struggle to get out of the car. But then she remembers what he'd been saying online. When you listen to him talking, he really is no different. He still is wanting to have sex with a little girl. Using the screen name Wrestling Dude East Tennessee, he asks the girl if he could be her first at sex. What have you done with a guy? Nothing. Wow. So I'd be your first at everything? Yeah. After he tells the decoy about his disability, he moves on to talking about anal and oral sex. He asks if he can shave her private parts and later makes a rather bizarre request. Send me a pair of your panties. Pick a pair you want me to have and wear them for two or three days straight. For reals? Yeah. He also asks her if he can have a three-way with the decoy and her sister and he repeatedly asks the girl to marry him. When they make a plan to meet, he tells her he'll bring an electric razor. KBI Commissioner David James watches on a monitor as McFetridge comes into the house. When you first look at him and, and you see him and, and you could say that I, I felt a little bit sorry for him, a little bit, and then you remember why we're here. You know, whether he has, has cerebral palsy or not, he still was there to molest a child. That's and pretty cool, right? There's no excuse for molesting a child. I don't care what it is. So what's up? Nothing. Nothing? No. <laughs> did you bring the razors? Yeah. So what did you want to do with them? I was kind of confused. I'll show you later. Can you just tell me, please? I won't come here if you don't tell me. I thought you just wanted to be shaved down there. Is that what you wanted to do? Yeah, that's what you wanted to. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous. I'd rather, like, talk about it first so I kind of know. You know what I mean? What, what do you want to talk about, sweetie? Well, like, tell me what you're going to do so I'm, like, kind of prepared. It's just easier to explain it as we go along before I do it. Well, like, what would you do first? I don't know. I'd like to hold you. And then what? And kiss you. That's why, that's why I was asking you to come over here. Well, yeah, I understand that, but... Yeah, I wouldn't force you to do anything, sweetheart. So I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Well, I I wasn't going to do nothing. You weren't going to do anything. 
No. Why don't uh, you tell me what your plan was tonight? Huh? I didn't bring nothing with me. I didn't do nothing bad, and I would never force nobody to do anything against their will, sir. But you did bring some things with you tonight. I, I brought a razor. A razor. And what were you going to do with the razor? I thought she wanted to be shaved down there, and I thought she said she was 17 or something. Well, I've got the transcript right here. I, I believe that, sir. Right. He was told online she was 13, and he even referred to her young age several times, wishing she was five years older. And as for all the explicit what sex talk... I was trying to see if I could find out if that was a cop or so I didn't waste the well, it sounds like it, it sounds like what you're trying to see is if you could score with a 13 year old girl no sir I mean have you chatted online with underage girls before quite honestly I had one time before a young girl yeah she, she says he was chatting with a 14 year old girl oh. and the girl's mother's boyfriend was a cop who found out about it and wanted to press charges. It never went to trial. I, I apologized and everybody. Did you plead guilty or no contact? We didn't go to court. It was just over the phone and like, hey, I'm sorry. This is why I said that. Was, uh, it, was it a scary situation to you? Yeah. Did you learn your lesson? Yeah. But it doesn't seem so tonight. And I didn't. Like I said, I wouldn't do nothing bad. You say, I want to make love to you. Have you ever seen people have sex? Um, it's just Then you send, her, you send her a picture of people having sex. I thought she asked for it. She asked for it. She didn't ask for it. You sent it to her. And even if she did, I mean, that's, you're not supposed to be sending stuff like that to somebody who says they're 13. But instead of taking responsibility, he tries to blame it all on the decoy. She was wanting me to come up here and see her so bad, and I didn't want to disappoint her. You're a grown man. I know. Well, what do you think should happen to you? I don't know. I don't. Well, there's something I got to tell you. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on adults who try to meet young teens online for sex. It's all wrong in my part, but she led me on a little too, and I understand both ways. I, I mean, she's she, not driving the train here. You're the grown-up. I know. How you get that, right? Yeah, that's stupid on my part. As he heads for the door, Dustin doesn't seem to know that officers from the Warren County Sheriff's Office are waiting to arrest him. Dustin, just take a step out, okay? Take a step out. Okay. 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 Because of his disability, officers are careful taking him into custody. I thought they said I wasn't under arrest. I wouldn't hurt nobody. While he's being booked, his car is searched. Braun electric razor, some uh, KY uh, lubricant, and uh, you know, digital camera as well. Then he's brought in for questioning, where he admits to bringing a razor and lubricant. What were you going to use it for? I guess. Was it in case you had sex with her? Yeah, but I was going to try not to. But you would have had sex if you hit it off with her. If we got along and I thought it was a meaningful relationship, honestly, then, yeah. Again, he says he's not the only one to blame. The girl teased him into coming. She called me today, want me to come up here. Mm -hmm. But you were telling her you were her boyfriend, right? Uh, you wanted to marry her? After she's 18. Okay. If we got along. And yeah, how does he explain that. the picture he sent? Because she said she'd never seen a penis before. Mm -hmm. why, does it, why does a girl that age have to see one? I don't have no answer for that one. He admits that he probably possesses child pornography. There's probably a few photos and a few videos that I had downloaded. Have you ever met anybody in any other chat rooms that you've had sex with? Yes. Any of them underage? No, sir. Dustin Jacob Mc. Fetridge. Later, he goes before a judge where he enters a not guilty plea. Your bond will also be 50,000 cash. Should I be signed over to the custody of my mother? No, sir. Okay, I'll see you see Friday. She gets her vehicle back. I'll see you Friday at 9 a.m. Okay. While McFetridge admitted to chatting with a minor before, you'll soon meet a man who went a lot further than that. He's a convicted sex offender. What was the actual criminal charge against you? Having sex with a minor. Having sex with a minor, okay.
I think we've got a guy. He's stopping, okay? During our investigation here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, men drive for miles, sometimes from other states like Tennessee and Indiana, to meet a young girl home alone willing to have sex. This would be one uh, stay fit. Our next visitor drove more than an hour from Nashville, Tennessee, to keep a date for sex with a girl posing as a 13-year-old. Hey, come around the side. This front door doesn't work. Okay. While online using the screen name Single Male Stay and Fit 2000, 41-year-old Richard Watwood not only poses naked on his webcam, he also masturbates for the decoy, then encourages her to touch herself. Two days later, he shows up at our house. I was just watching some TV. Oh, okay. We got these new chairs. Sit down in it. It's the greatest thing ever. He thinks the girl's a virgin and home alone for the weekend. By the looks of his chat log, yeah, he's here to take her virginity. If you slide them. Hey, can I use your restroom? Um, well, we're having some plumbing issues right now because it's the new house, so it's uh -huh. not really hooked up yet. Yeah. So do you, can you hold it for a little bit maybe until later? I got to pee real bad. I've been having to go since well, Nashville. Before you do that, I've got a couple questions for you. Uh-huh. What's going on? Ah, uh, not much. Hey, no, no, I need to ask you some questions first. Keep your hands on your pockets, please, so I can see them. Please, have a seat. I don't want to have a seat. You don't want to have a seat? You don't want to tell me what you're up to? He insists I I, I he has to go to the bathroom. Right now. now, what was your plan here tonight? And then takes off. Well, there's something you need to know before you leave. That's I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. All right, going to the side door. Coming out, guys. Coming your way. All the way out. All the way out. All the way down. Get on the ground. Get on your stomach. Get on your stomach. He's taken away in an unmarked car. driven to the local police station and booked. Officers search his car for evidence. This Viagra. And two unmarked types Two of unmarked types. Possibly. Several times. Later, Watwood is brought in for questioning. You understand why you're here? Mm -mm. Okay. You were picked up tonight for traveling to see a minor. He's read his rights and asked to sign a waiver. I won't waive my rights. Like all the other men you've met so far, he's arraigned before a judge, where his bail is set at $50,000 cash. I want a plea of not guilty on your behalf this morning. Okay? Yes, sir. I'm coming. I'm coming. Right here. Meet 34-year-old James Fowler. He's been chatting online with a decoy posing as a 13-year-old. Calling himself, you want to come and get me 2005, he wastes no time getting to the point. I like to pleasure people and be pleasured. I just don't chat. I meet. I want to know. If I meet you, you will let me pleasure you? Haha, <laughs> sounds fun. Then he turns on his webcam and shows her his private parts. The next day, he's walking okay. into our living room. Look at this. We got these sweet new chairs. Sit down. It's so cool. It has like a massager in it. If you push those buttons, yeah. I got him to sit in the chair, and I was just sitting on the edge of my chair. That's pretty cool, right? That's wow. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, he just stood up and started heading towards me. Do you want me to get you something to drink? He was definitely headed towards me for something. Jay, have a seat right over there where we were. Oh, What's happening? Please sit down. What's going on? I thought this was never going to happen. You thought this is never going to happen? Yeah. And what do you think this is? It's not, it's not good. Now, what was your plan here tonight? Have, have, have a, fun, a time. Have a fun time? Yeah. With a girl who told you she was how old? I think it was uh, 13. And how old are you? He says he drove an hour and 42 minutes to get here. And during that drive at all, did you think, man, this is a bad idea? Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Should have turned around and should have thought about it. Have you met other people before on the internet? Sure, consent. Older. I mean, everybody's old, you know, that I've been. I've never done this before. What, what made you decide to do this for the first time tonight? You know, I, wow, it crossed my mind. I, I seen this show and I'm like, you see, you see, you've seen which show? This one. This show. Yeah. And what was your reaction when you when you've seen the show before? It was bad. It's just it's just bad. That's bad. What, I say. The, what the people were doing was bad. Yeah. Now you say here that you like to pleasure people and be pleasured. Yeah. Now you know this is a thirteen-year-old girl. Yeah. 
You talk about how having sex for the first time may be painful for the girl. And then you sent these pictures. Yeah. You ever been in trouble before? You have been? Yeah. What was the actual criminal charge against you? Having sex with a minor. Having sex with a minor, yeah. okay. That's right. With a minor. He's a convicted sex offender. In 1995, he pleaded guilty to one count of unlawful sexual intercourse. He says it was a big misunderstanding that the girl showed him a fake ID saying she was 18. Well, you've seen the show before, so you know that, that this is about the time where I need to tell you who I am. I'm Chris Hansen, and I'm with Dateline NBC. Yeah. And this is To Catch a Predator. Yeah. He's in no hurry. He knows what's waiting for him outside. Sheriff's office, come on down. Come on. Jay, throw up where we can see See palms, palms, all the way down. All the way down, come on. Later at the police station, he's brought into the interrogation room, read his rights, okay, and starts answering questions. And what were your intentions when you got here? I was intentions to be pleasurable and pleasure her, but I, I might not have done the actual pen penetration. I just I just wanted to see how it went. That's all, you know. Okay. Now you're gonna have to define pleasurable for me. Felicia having the lady have pleasure below and likewise, I guess. He says he lives with his girlfriend and her five year old son. Does she know uh, you chat? Yeah, that's what she didn't know about this. I told it was a couple. A couple? A couple, two people, a man and a woman. That you were coming to see? Yeah. For what? I have pleasure with couples. So she knows that you travel to have relationships? He tells the agent about his prior conviction for sex with a minor and says he got probation. But later he was arrested for not reporting to his probation officer. So I went back and done 37 days in the pen in Delaware. He also admits to dating a teenager. He says she was 18, but he doesn't remember her name. You lived with this girl and you didn't know her name. I've had a lot of girlfriends. Well, I'm sure you have, Travis, I but I want to know this one's name. I don't know. I can see her face, but I just, I can't picture her name. How long did she live with you? A couple months. Like all the other men arrested here in Kentucky, he Thank pleads you. not guilty. Come here. No, why would I get any closer if you have a gun? There's one more potential predator we'd like you to meet. You. He claims he's a police officer and uh, carries a gun. Lift up your shirt. Turn around. Find out what happens when he's met by police. All right, John Raven says he's about 55 miles away. At 7 p.m. on Saturday night, a perverted justice decoy starts chatting online with a man from Indiana, five and a half hours away from our undercover house in Bowling Green, Kentucky. I figured, oh, there's no way this guy's going to come. Calling himself John Raven 2000, he tells the decoy, who is posing as a 13-year-old, that he's 24 and says, I'm too old to do anything with you. But that doesn't last long. Soon after, the sex talk begins. He asks the decoy about her last boyfriend. Did you him? Yeah. Why you want to know that? I just do. Okay. See, I ain't no baby. Would you do it to me? Would you want me to? Yes. Yeah, it would be cool to try stuff out. You're cute. The chat continues for another 20 minutes. Then he gets in his car and starts driving. He's known the decoy for less than two hours. During the long drive, he talks to the decoy on the phone and reveals more about himself. We just got off the phone with uh, the guy who's claiming to be a cop. We don't know that he is, but he says he carries his gun everywhere with him. So now we have to assume that John Raven 2000 is a police officer and he's armed. The security people were really great in instructing me as to what to do, and the first and foremost important thing was the safety. Here comes 24-year-old Michael Patterson. He actually made the five-and-a-half-hour drive to meet a 13-year-old for sex. Casey has been instructed to make certain the man is unarmed. Hey! 
Oh my god. You didn't really bring your gun with you, did you? Because that kind of freaks me out. No. Well, you said you always carry it with you. It's in my car. Uh, I don't believe you. Seriously, look. Lift up your shirt. Turn around. Lift up your pants. <laughs> you're good. You're killing me. Pull your pockets inside out. Come on. <laughs> your other pocket. My wallet. Please, change. Come on, you gotta trust me. I don't have it on me here. I got the okay to let him in the house. All right, I guess I believe you. Okay, close your door. Come on in. We're being a weenie. Oh, I wasn't sure. You said you always carried it with you. Huh? I wasn't sure because you I said you always carried it. He just continued to joke about it, and the oh, cops and the security know. were, you know, still keeping a really strong eye on him because you never know. So you're a cop, not a detective? Detective, yeah. I'm a lieutenant. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So Thanks. you're excited? Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Are you excited? Yeah. So what do you want to do? Where's your room at? Let's go through the house. Look at it. This is a huge house. Yeah, it is pretty big. It's oh nice, though. Oh, my God. My hair's a mess. So, Lieutenant. What's up? What are we investigating tonight? Nothing much. What's your plan here? I just drove down here to... And how, how long was the drive? <laughs> five and a half hours. Now, what would motivate somebody to drive five and a half hours to come here to this house? I don't know, sir. But you got to know. You're the one who did the driving. I know. Now, you're a lawman. So if you're doing the interview, what would you want to know most? Basically, why was I here? Yeah, why were you here? I'm just, you know, I'm just lonely. I don't have anybody, and I need somebody to talk to. You knew she was 13. She told you. And I was kind of worried about it. I, I told her I'd, <laughs> she was five years older. I didn't mind talking to her. But, but you kept talking anyway. Yeah. You wouldn't know what to do with me. Am I supposed to know what to do with old men? Only with me. <laughs> so this is funny. I know. I'm sorry, sir. It's funny. What do you think should happen to a police officer who gets caught doing something like this? Well, really bad could happen. How long have you been in law enforcement? Just a year now. Explain to me why somebody with apparently so much going on would take that risk. I mean, it doesn't make sense to me. I'm going through a divorce, partially. And so that makes it okay? No, it's not okay. Not, it's, it'll never be okay. Not for anybody. What do you suppose your chief's going to say about this? He's going to be too happy. Well, there's something you got to know. And it's I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. And we're doing a story on adults who try to meet young teens online for sex. I apologize, man to man. All right. He gathers up all his belongings and heads to the door, apparently thinking the worst is over. Because of the possibility that Patterson is armed, an officer acts more quickly than usual, calling out to him as soon as he opens the door. Sheriff's office! Patterson steps back into the house, and an officer shoots him with a taser gun. Only one probe stays attached, so the taser is unable to shock him and drop him to the ground. Once Patterson is cuffed, he's brought outside and taken away to the local police station. When officers search his car, they find a loaded gun. One in the chamber. A spare round of ammunition and handcuffs. Later, he agrees to waive his rights and answer questions. I'd like to discuss with you why you're here. Now we hear the truth about the man claiming to be a detective. He tells the agent that he was only on the police force for a few months as a trainee before he was thrown off. Oh, it was a traffic violation. I violated their SOP, their standard, standard operating procedure. He was out of his jurisdiction in his personal car using I police out, lights. I got some blue red lights and I put them in my car. It was thrown out of court, so they dismissed me for that, but it was thrown out. How long ago was that? Uh, just about like a month ago. But according to the local prosecutor, the case wasn't dismissed. He still faces the charge of impersonating a police officer.
That wasn't his only run-in with the law. Patterson charged more than $1,400 on a credit card that had been mistakenly sent to him. He pleaded guilty to one count of theft, a misdemeanor, served three days in jail, and received one year of probation. So you had intentions to, to at least have oral sex with her? Yeah. And how old did she tell you that she was? She said going on 14. I knew I screwed up talking to a girl that age. I knew. I'm not stupid. I'm not no creep, but... A total of seven men were arrested here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and charged with unlawful transaction with a minor less than 16 years of age. A felony. Since this is a felony, you are entitled to a preliminary hearing. They've all pleaded not guilty. That brings the total number of potential predators arrested in a year by the Kentucky Attorney General's office to 27. We know that, that predators are now saying we're not coming to Kentucky. They're watching for us, so Kentucky's kids are safer. We've conducted 12 separate to catch a predator investigations now over the course of three years. And during that time, police have arrested more than 260 men, leading to more than 130 convictions. You can learn more about our predator investigations on our website. You'll also find a complete online safety guide, including advice on how to talk to your kids about the real dangers predators pose. Just log on to dateline.msnbc.com. That's all for this edition of Dateline Friday. I'm Chris Hansen. For Ann Curry and all of us at NBC News, good night.